Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about uh, regularization and overfitting. And I'm going to give you uh, really a, an intuition about how does regularization work. So uh, let's give, uh, you know, why would you use regularization is kind of a first question. So let me give you a kind of a real simple definition. Regularization is used to reduce overfitting. Used to reduce overfitting. So that leads to the question of, well, what's overfitting? So let me give you a quick uh, overview of what that is. And I'm going to show you a real kind of simple concept here is that if you have uh, really a set of uh, XY discrete points in a Cartesian plane here, and let's just do something very simple. I've got four points. And if I used, uh, uh, let's see, a high order polynomial, I could, I could fit this uh, nearly exactly, right? I could fit it, if this was a fifth order polynomial, and that was a good drawing, the fifth order polynomial would something, would look like, uh, you know, um, x, and this is y and x, right? So this would be x to the fifth times some coefficient plus x to the fourth times a second coefficient plus a third coefficient times x to the third, dot, 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 and that would equal y. Now, there's another way to fit this, right? If we did a very simple fit, and let's, uh, let's change that. Let's just make this a little bit easier to see. And we did a, uh, you know, a first order fit, and y would equal to c1 times x1 plus b, standard linear fit. Um, you know, the, the error for, for uh, let's call this y1 and y2, the error for y1 would be nearly zero, or zero if, we, if it was a, a perfect fifth order fit on a few points. So this could be approximately zero or zero. And you can see here that the, the error would be greater for y2. But let's call this first set of data our training data. And we trained and then we created these two models, y1 and y2. And then we introduce a test set of data. And let's say my test set of data is something like this. And the test set corresponds, if we compare that to y1, uh, y1 and y2, the test set of data, they actually, the error would be less for the test set than it would be for our polynomial fit. So the, the, dis, the distance between y2 and y1 is greater in both of these cases uh, for the circles. So the tr training, when training uh, the model for training is greater than your test set that's often called overfitting in the machine learning world and you're going to do a lot of training and then comparing that to the test set to understand and look at the loss and to understand if you have overfitting so that's a that's a definition of overfitting now um, let's take a step back so now we know what overfitting is and what we wanted to talk today about regularization I need to remind you that in an earlier video we decide to find something called a cost function and uh, let me give myself a little more room here to operate I'll pull that up and the cost function we we defined as C and uh, I'm gonna say y hat minus y y is, is the actual value and y hat is being our calculated value after being passed through the neural network and so this is our uh, our squared error and or absolute error here uh, it's probably not fair to call it absolute error but it's a, we're going to use uh, our error squared here is our definition for our cost function well, with regularization you add something to the cost function and we introduce some new concepts here so lambda this is a little bit of math but we're, gonna, we're gonna talk about the intuition that's associated with this math over m m being the number of nodes in the network and then you sum over L equal 1 to L, and L being the number of layers, L1 and L2. And then we, what, in our case, we want to take the absolute value of the weights in every layer, okay? And this is called the L1 norm. And you can also do an L2 norm, which is to the squared. But uh, just today, we're going to talk about the L1 norm conceptually and how to think about regularization. 
So uh, also remember, we, we said that the purpose of the neural net, what we're trying to do with the neural net is to calculate the next weight and optimize the weights. So how do we change the weights it's by this function? The next weight is equal to the previous weight minus r, which is our learning rate, times the gradient of the cost function. So what we're going to do now as our cost function, we're going to take this second component called the regularization and add that to our cost function. So this is called regularization. Kind of a fancy name for um, something that's added to the cost function. Now what what actually is happening here? Why is this important and what does it do? Well, the, back to the definition, the regularization is used to, to reduce overfitting. So how does this work? So if you think about it, if we have a very high value of lambda and a high value, you know, a zero means we're back to just our, our normal cost function. A high value of lambda may be 5, 10, 20, 100. So lambda could range from zero to 100. And if we, let's say we have a very high value of lambda here, what happens to W? So if we have a high value of lambda, then W must be lower, is lowered when we do our cost optimization, when we do our optimization function of the cost function. So what does that actually mean? Okay, let's step back and let's look at one single node or neuron and remember, we have x values coming in. We have weights um, that are applied to the x values. Um, I guess it's probably better to say we have x values, but then we apply the weight to them, and then we have a bias value, and then we apply the weight, and then we have something called an activation function. So you can think of the activation function operating on the weight 1, uh, layer 1, times x1, times layer 1 plus B1 times layer 1. And we may have several of these uh, X's features, inputs, coming in, and so we could duplicate that all times the activation function. So let's, let's think about what that would mean. Uh, and a simple way, I think, of, of kind of abstracting this is, is if we had uh, a set of uh, a set of values in the Y X coordinate system here and uh, once again I use a few data points here and I had a fit like this is this this is let's say that this is before regularization before regularization and then what we essentially do if we lower the W this what this means is that we're really lowering the change of Y given a specific change of X so what does that mean it means we get a new function or a new curve that's really kind of like this. Maybe I drew that a little bit shallow. Let's uh, let's go back. It's a little bit too dramatic. We have a lower w. So what's in this? This is a concept, and it's called sensitivity. So really, what we've done is we have lowered the sensitivity, sensitivity by changing the weights, right? So what sensitivity means is for a given x, if I have x here, a small delta x that had high sensitivity, I would have a very high slope, and if I lowered the sensitivity, it flattens the line. So that's what that means. So uh, we have lowered the sensitivity by using a high lambda. So high, high lambda results in that's supposed to be an arrow. Okay, results in a lower W, lower sensitivity. So I think a conceptual way of thinking about a regularization is, and let's let's go ahead and spell this out. Regularization is that it lowers the W, lowers the W, lowers the weights, and it makes my model makes the model less sensitive, less sensitive. And if my model is less sensitive, it is more likely, or less likely, is really what I should say, less likely to overfit. And that's the punchline. 
So this was meant to give you a, uh, a conceptual overview and intuition about what uh, regularization is. Regularization is an additional term that's added to the cost function and when we do our gradient descent and we, we optimize uh, over the whole network, we're optimizing to find the next W, the next set of weights. If we have a high lambda value, then that means that overall the weights are a little bit smaller and intuitively if the weights are a little bit smaller then have less sensitivity and I have uh, less likely, the, the model is less likely to overfit. So um, that's all I have for today. Just a good overview of what regularization is and until next time, I will talk to you soon.